Feliz Navidad. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year from KISS. Feliz Navidad, Happy New Year, Merry Christmas from KISS. <laughs> ho, ho, ho! I'm wishing everybody a really Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year. Someone stole Santa? That does not rock! community welcome to another episode of 25 days of kissmas where every day leading up to kissmas i will be reviewing and discussing every kiss studio album plus more for the ninth episode i will be reviewing the peter chris solo album from 1978 peter decided to revisit his past a bit dust off and recycle some songs that existed prior and shine a light on his jazz soul and r&b roots and the end result is a true artistic statement that stood out among the rest of the four so let's dig into the album side one track one i'm gonna love you this track written by peter and stan penridge dates back to the early 70s with peter's pre-kiss band lips this is a bit of an updated version since there is an extra freshly written verse and with the original demo kind of coming across as a folky type of tune this track evolved into a sort of bob seger style rocker Track 2, You Matter to Me. This is somewhat of a cover tune written by John Vistano, Michael Morgan, and Vinnie Poncia, who was the producer of this album. John Vistano was in a band called the Blue Jays, who were signed to Map City, which was Vinnie Poncia's label. So given the connections and John's raspy voice similar to Peter's, this song was brought forward to him to record for the album. Has a slight disco vibe to it with the synthesizers, and it was released as the second single from the album, which did fail to chart. Track 3, Tossin' and Turnin'. This is a cover of the song made famous by Bobby Lewis, and while the arrangement is identical to the original, the Catman makes it his own by working in his lucky number 3, as can be seen on his costume at the time, with the lyric, The Clock Downstairs Was Striking 3. This was the only track from the album to be performed by Kiss on the Dynasty Tour. Track 4, Don't You Let Me Down. Here is another Peter and Stan Penridge composition that dates back to the band Lips. This rendition has more of an R&B vibe to it with the background harmony vocals in the chorus and even the melodies in the verses have a slight Beatles quality to them. This song was the first single to be released from the album, which unfortunately did fail to chart. Track 5, That's the Kind of Sugar Papa Likes. A rather interesting title and another leftover from Lips by Peter and Stan Penridge. More of a rocking kind of tune with a guitar solo by Steve Luthiger of Toto, who had also done some session work on Peter's solo albums Post Kiss. Now we're going to flip the album over to Side 2, Track 6, Easy Thing. I am led to believe that this was a freshly written tune between Peter and Stan Penridge, but Sean Delaney plays a big role in this one. So while the song was written by the two, Sean Delaney had cut the song's original demo with a batch of top-notch session players such as Paul Schaefer of David Letterman's band, Elliot Randall of Steely Dan, and Jeff Baxter of the Doobie Brothers. And then Peter and Vinnie Poncia went ahead and used the demo on the final album with Peter's vocals, so it certainly caused a bit of a rift between between Peter and Sean. Track 7, Rock Me Baby. This is solely a Sean Delaney piece, which in turn was kind of a favor for Peter, since Sean had agreed to produce Gene's album, and Peter was rejected by producer Tom Dowd, so Sean had cut some demos for Peter to land him a producer, and sure enough, Vinnie Poncia entered the picture, and the rest, as they say, is history. Track 8, Kiss the Girl Goodbye. Another fresh Peter and Stan Penridge track that is done in the style of what Lips would have done, which is stripped back acoustic guitars, percussion, and harmonies. This song can be seen as the anti-Beth type song, since truthfully the song is about Peter leaving his first wife, Lydia. Track 9, Hooked on Rock and Roll. This is another Lips leftover from Peter and Stan Penridge, but this time around, Vinnie Poncia earned a co-writing credit as well. The differences between the original demo and this version are quite noticeable with the perspective of the lyrics being modified. It's one of the more rocking tunes on the album, as can be told by the title. Track 10, I Can't Stop the Rain. Here is another one of Sean Delaney's penned and recorded demos polished for the album, and it's a track that does get some acclaim from fans, despite Peter not having an active hand in the writing or arranging. 
As for where this album stands in my solo albums ranking, I would put Peter's album at the number four spot. Given the fact that stylistically this album is completely aggro to what Kiss was doing in the hard rock vein is what brings this album down to the bottom of the barrel for me personally. The R&B, soul, and jazz sound that Peter explores here works very well for him with his raspy, whiskey kind of voice, but some of the stuff on here like Easy Thing and I Can't Stop the Rain just comes across as cheesy 70s dime a dozen easy listening ballads that are very much capsules of the time. Maybe Casablanca was banking on having a repeat of the success of Beth, and when the first single failed to do much, a second one re was released, thus Peter's album being the only one to have two singles out of the four solo albums, and that didn't do anything either. Can't knock Peter for doing what he's familiar with and fond of, but it all falls flat. So there you guys go. That is the ninth episode of the 25 Days of Kissmas series. Stay tuned tomorrow for the 10th episode, and you already can guess what comes next. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead, give it a like, and subscribe to the channel. See you guys in the next video, and most importantly, keep the record spinning. Dubs, listen, and children listen to hear sleigh bells in the snow. I'm dreaming of a